So after making that video, the world in UV, I got a lot of questions about how you actually film in the UV. And it was harder than I expected, so I wanted to share with you the things that I learned. So the first thing to know is that in virtually all cameras, there is a little filter right in front of the sensor that blocks ultraviolet light. It's actually called a hot mirror. And generally you want this hot mirror there because as we saw in the ultraviolet, the world looks much hazier. And so if you didn't have a filter like this, all of your pictures would look a little bit more hazy. They wouldn't look as crisp and clear. So that's why that filter is there. This is the GH5 that I use for most of my shooting, but I have this GH4 that I had been using and I actually had the hot mirror removed. Now there are ways that you can do this yourself. There's some DIY tutorials on the internet, but I did not do that. I sent this camera away to have that hot mirror professionally removed. And I'll actually put a link in the description to the people who I had do it. It's not cheap, but I didn't want to destroy the camera. And when you remove the hot mirror, there's a few different options of what you can replace it with. You could replace it with a UV only pass filter. And I thought about doing that and it would basically just transform your camera into a UV only camera. But uh, I actually planned to do that. But once I sent it in, I actually thought, well, I'd prefer for this camera to be able to shoot any types of light. And so I had them replace the hot mirror with a, uh, a filter that doesn't block any light. Ultraviolet, infrared, uh, UV, it all gets through. So this is now my full spectrum camera and I haven't really explored its full spectrum capabilities yet, but uh, this is what I used to shoot that UV video. Now, once you have a camera that can receive ultraviolet light, well, then you need a lens that can pass ultraviolet light. And most of the lenses I have, made up of a whole bunch of pieces of glass, will absorb that ultraviolet light. So if you look through them with the uh, UV camera, you actually can't see through these lenses. Almost all lenses are opaque to ultraviolet light. So that's annoying and it's a real challenge. But there are some old lenses which are uh, pretty, pretty small and basic. Uh, this one is a 35 millimeter. It's a very old and not a particularly good lens. But one advantage it has is that there's not really enough glass in here to block a lot of the ultraviolet light. And so uh, you can actually use something like this for shooting in the UV. My favorite lens by far is this uh, Voigtlander. It is a very fast piece of glass. It's f.95. And when I tested it with the UV filter, I found that I could actually uh, see through this one very well, even in the ultraviolet. So this was the main lens that I used for shooting in the ultraviolet. Now, once you have a lens that will pass ultraviolet, you need to get a filter that will pass the ultraviolet. And one of the challenges is that most of the filters that pass ultraviolet also pass infrared. But here's the thing, in ambient daylight, there is way more infrared than there is ultraviolet. So if your filter passes even just a little bit of infrared, it's gonna be swamped. Your image is gonna be swamped with infrared instead of ultraviolet. So you'll be thinking that the photo or that the images that you're getting are ultraviolet, but in fact, they are infrared. So this is one of those filters this one is called the ZWB1, and it passes ultraviolet. It won't pass visible, as you can see, uh, but it also passes infrared. So if you really want to work with this one, you need an additional filter that blocks the infrared. Really challenging. So what I decided to do was go for a very expensive filter that I know only passes ultraviolet. And this is a filter typically used on a two inch telescope. It's called the Bader U filter, the two inch. And this cost something like three or $400. So this was not cheap, but I wanted to be 100% sure that all of the light I was recording was ultraviolet and I wasn't getting any of that uh, infrared contamination. Now, what I realized when trying to shoot in the ultraviolet is that the major challenge you have is that there really isn't very much ultraviolet light around at all. When light reaches the Earth from the sun, about 10% of it is ultraviolet, whereas 40% is visible light and 50% is longer wavelengths. But the Earth's atmosphere, and in particular the ozone layer, does a very good job of filtering the UV. It filters out about 77% of the ultraviolet light. Most of that is at the shorter wavelengths. 
So by the time ultraviolet light reaches the ground, it's only 3% of the electromagnetic radiation uh, that is here on the ground compared to about 43 or 44% visible light. So there's less than a tenth as much ultraviolet light as there is visible light. And this makes it incredibly difficult to shoot. I mean, think about that. It's effectively like even broad daylight is a low light situation in a way uh, when you're shooting in the ultraviolet. And that's why I loved uh, this lens because it can allow in so much light, f.95, and uh, that is what enabled me to get such great shots in the ultraviolet. You'll notice if you compare the ultraviolet shots to the visible light shots that the ultraviolet shots have a much shallower depth of field. And that's because I basically had to shoot completely wide open at f.95 to get enough ultraviolet light to make a really nice image. Um, so that, that is, I think, one of the main challenges of shooting UV is that there actually isn't that much UV around to shoot. So, I hope that gives you an idea of how you can go about uh, shooting in the ultraviolet if that is of interest to you. And maybe in future I will take advantage of the full spectrum nature of this camera and we'll see a video called The World in the Infrared.